use the divergence theorem to compute the net outward flux for the given vector field across the given surface. So here we have a vector field F defined by the components minus x, y, 4, z. And since we know we want to use the divergence theorem to compute the net outward flux, we need the divergence of our vector field. So the divergence of our vector field is computed by the dot product of the del operator with the vector field. So we have the del operator with components ddx, ddy, ddz, and we're dotting this with our vector field here, minus x, y, 4z. So by the dot product, we are left well, we have the derivative of minus x with respect to x plus the derivative of y with respect to y plus the derivative of 4z with respect to z. So this leaves us with minus 1 plus 1 plus 4. And so therefore, the divergence of the vector field is equal to 4. All right. So... Now that we have the divergence of our vector field, we want to think about the solid region D and the surface that bounds this region. So looking up at our question here, we have that our surface S is the surface of the paraboloid Z is equal to 4 minus X squared minus Y squared, such that Z is greater than or equal to 0, plus its base in the XY plane. So we don't have a simple geometric formula for this solid region created by our surface, but we can easily find the bounds. So let's go ahead and start simply by sketching this region. So we are in space. We have the z-axis. We have the x-axis. And last but not least, we have the y-axis. And we have that this solid region is bounded by the surface. And we have the paraboloid. We have this paraboloid has a vertice at 4. So here is the paraboloid. And we'll make that look a little more three-dimensional momentarily. So the paraboloid z is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And then this paraboloid is bounded below by the xy plane. So we're indicating the xy plane below. So this is the plane. Z is equal to 0. And so we can say that this is creating our surface S. And we have the solid region bounded within. So we can see, looking at our solid region D here, we can see the bounds on Z. We can see that this region D is bounded above by the paraboloid and bounded below by the XY plane. So therefore, Z is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 4, minus x squared minus y squared. But what about the x and y bounds? So looking at our solid region, to determine those x and y bounds, we want to think about the solid's projection into the xy plane. So we can even see that region here. So this is what we need to find next. We need the solid or excuse me, we need the projection of the solid into the xy plane. So if this we're thinking about the projection or the shadow that's cast into the xy plane, we know that this is where z is equal to 0. So since z is equal to 0, and using our paraboloid, we can say that we have 0 is equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared, and if we simply rewrite this, we see that this is a circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. 
So we have a circle centered at the origin with a radius of two. So here is the projection that region R in our XY plane. And we have, again, centered here at the origin with that radius of two. So here is two and two. And so we can say, well, this is a perfect polar region. So we can see that the radius here is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to two. And since it's a complete circle, we have that theta is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to two pi. Now, if we're using polar coordinates in the plane and we have z bounds, we're going to need to convert our z bounds to cylindrical coordinates. So notice, looking up at our z bounds, the coefficient of x and y, we have that common coefficient of minus 1, so we can even think about this as 4, minus x squared plus y squared. And so we can make a little note to ourselves here. Well, since we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared in polar coordinates, then our z bounds become, or are equivalent to, z is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 4 minus r squared. So we have converted our z bounds, and we now have beautiful cylindrical coordinates as well as the divergence of our vector field, and we're officially ready to set up that triple integral for the divergence theorem. All right, so here we go. We are ready to evaluate that triple integral for the divergence theorem. So plugging in everything that we just found, we have the outer bounds are theta, so that's 0 to 2 pi. The middle integral is r, so we have 0 to 2. And the inner bounds are z, so that's 0 to 4 minus r squared, and we know that the divergence of our vector field was 4, and then remember, if we're using cylindrical coordinates, the differential is r dz dr d theta. And we're ready to go. So integrating with respect to z first, this gives us, so the outer and middle bounds stay the same, so 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2, and then integrating this with respect to z, this gives us 4 times a radius times z, which we're ready now to evaluate from 0 to 4 minus r squared, dr d theta. And so evaluating this, we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 times the radius multiplied by, so we have the upper bound 4 minus r squared minus 0, dr d theta. All right, so we can take this extra radius, the radius here, and distribute it through to both terms and simplify this to the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 multiplied by 4r minus r cubed dr d theta. And we're ready now to integrate with respect to the radius. So we still have the integral from 0 to 2 pi. But now integrating with respect to r, we have 2r squared minus r to the fourth by 4. And we're evaluating this from 0 to 2, d theta. So we have, this will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 4 multiplied by, so we are plugging in our upper bound here, which is 2. So we have 2 times 2 squared, so 2 times 4 gives us 8, minus 2 to the 4th, so that's 16 over 4, and then minus 0, d theta. And we have some nice simplification. We know that 16 divided by 4 goes to 4, and then we have 8 minus 4 goes to 4, and then we have 4 times 4 gives us 16. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 16 d theta 
which is just a cute little integral. We have 16 theta from 0 to 2 pi for a beautiful final answer of 32 pi.